Your Honor, before the jury gets back, brought back in, there are two things the government would like to request. One is, this witness, Ms. Carter, told Mr. Mulroll that she needed to hear the voice again. We didn't want to direct her when, we didn't want to talk to her when she was on direct. So we would ask that that recording, a small piece of it, be placed for her in the courtroom now so that she can determine whether she recognizes the voices. The second thing is a little trickier. We have a witness. The defense knows about him. His name is Tyrone Stewart. He was the kid who was shot 14 times that the court heard about yesterday in direct testimony. He is cognitively somewhat disabled, and he also has, you know, colloquially, it seems like PTSD. He is here to testify now. The defense has graciously agreed to let us call him out of turn with leave of court, and we can do that either at the end of Ms. Carter's direct, which we anticipate to be within the next half hour to 40 minutes, or right now, or if the court so chooses, not at all. We can try to see if we can get him back. The defense agrees to calling the witness out of order? We do. Yes, Your Honor. Call him now. Thank you, Your Honor. What about the issue of the voice recognition? Well, I thought you were going to play the tape to her during the break. And we didn't have... We can. We would normally not speak to our witness when we had them on direct. So without letting the court know that, we weren't prepared to do that. We should have, and we could do that now. Do it now. Thank you, Your Honor. The United States calls Tyrone Stewart. So, are you ready for the jury? We are, Your Honor. Thank you. We're ready for the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, the government has a witness that they need to call before we break for the day. So they're going to call this witness out of order now, and after this witness testifies, then we'll resume with the direct examination of Ms. Carter. All right, Mr. Buchanan. Your Honor, the United States calls Mr. Tyrone Stewart. Sir, if you will raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the cause before this court shall be the truth? the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Tyrone Stewart, plaintiff's witness, sworn. Thank you. Sir, what's your name? Tyrone Stewart. Mr. Stewart, in 2013, did you live in an apartment complex on Fairburn Road? Yes, sir. Did you live there in January of 2013? Yes, sir. While you were there in January of 2013, were you friends with and associated with some guys who were GDs? Yes, sir. GD is short for Gangster Disciples? Yes, sir. At some point, were you instructed to pick up some trash? Yes, sir. And did you do it? No, sir. And why didn't you do it? Because I don't like... I ain't affiliated with no gang. I ain't... They was trying to pressure me, so I didn't go with it. Did you tell these folks that you didn't want to pick up the trash? Yes, sir. And Mr. Stewart, what happened to you after that? I got jumped by six people. You got beat up by six people? Yes, sir. And after you got beat up by those six people, what happened? Two weeks later, I got shot up. Two weeks later, you got shot up? Yes, sir. Do you know the person who shot you? Yes, sir. What was his street name? O. O. And was O a gangster disciple? Yes, sir. And Mr. Stewart, tell the ladies and the gentlemen of the jury how O shot you. I got shot 14 times multiple times from here all the way down. Did he shoot you at that apartment complex at Fairburn Road? Yes, sir. Did he shoot you in your arms? Yes, sir. Did he shoot you in your legs? 
I got shot from here all the way down. Shot you in your head too? Yes, sir. Did you go to the hospital? Yes, sir. Did you stay in the hospital for quite a long time? Yes, sir. Did you wind up staying in a rehab center? No, sir. Just a hospital? Just a hospital. No more questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination? All right. Mr. Stewart, you're excused. Okay. All right. Mr. Mulroll, we'll continue with Ms. Carter. Thank you, Your Honor. Denise Carter, plaintiff's witness, previously sworn. All right, Ms. Carter. Let's pick up where we left off. Now, during the break, did you get a chance to listen to that recording that we talked about? Yes, sir. Did you recognize the voice of the main person speaking on that recording? Yes. Who was the person speaking on the recording? Is. Your Honor, the recording that was played for the witness is Government Exhibit 826, marked for identification. I have it on a disc here for the court. I provided a disc for defense counsel to review. And the government moves that into evidence at this time. It's admitted without objection. Ms. Etienne, would you please play Government 826 for us? We'll take it from the beginning and just let the entire thing play. That person speaking at the beginning. Is that is or is that a different person? That's someone different. Did he say, shut the door there? Yes, sir. Let's have a bit more volume on that, Ms. Etienne. Ms. Miss Carter, I heard the word licks on that recording. Is licks a word that you're familiar with in the GDs? Yeah. What is a lick? Getting money. It could be robbing someone. It could be selling drugs. It's getting a lot of money. And they're talking about licks on this recording? Yes. Okay. Let's continue playing. The person who just said, I know two Nigerians who I really can't stand. Who is the person speaking there? That is. Had you already told us about Africans that you knew? He told me that too. Remind us, who were the Africans? The gentleman that we got the money from through the banks. That's the people he took the money to. Okay, let's continue. When Iz says in the last two weeks he made 8 Gs, which would be 10% of the 80,000 Gs that Nigerians got, is that roughly consistent with the multiple thousand dollar deposits that you had been seeing in your bank account? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. So, the conversation that we listened to, Ms. Carter, with Is talking about the Nigerians and licks and $80,000, was he speaking in a similar or a different type of way when you all were planning the robbery that you told us about before the break? Similar. It's similar. And was that... If that had gone successfully, would that have been referred to as a lick also? Yes. And the word licks that we talked about, is that a word that would come up regularly when GDs got together? I think it is not just regular amongst the GDs. It was regular amongst anyone that was around us, whether they were GD or not. So this isn't a vocabulary? This isn't a term that's unique to the GDs? No. What I'm asking is, when you were around GDs, whether that was meetings or other gatherings, would people talk about licks? Not really around me. I didn't hear it be brought up often. A few times. And one of those times was the one with Iz and Izzy and the Africans? Yes. Now, right before we took the break, I had asked you about the hate committee, and I think you told us that, at that time, you hadn't heard too much about it. Now, was there another time when you started to learn more about the hate committee? Yes, there was. And I didn't want to ask you about things you learned as part of this case after the indictments came. But when you were still associating with the GDs, did you over time learn more about what the hate committee was? Yes. The first thing, first time I really started learning who they were is when I was actually notified by one of the members, one of the GD members at the hate committee 
was sent to Michigan to try to come up there and kill me. And so was this after you moved to Georgia? Yes. So, Miss Carter, I didn't want to jump to the end of the story, but it sounds like we're talking about the hate committee. It's kind of necessary to know about how and why you ended up in Michigan. So, let's fast forward just a bit. You've said a few times when you left Georgia or when you went to Michigan. When was it that you left Georgia? In 2014, in September. And why did you leave Georgia in September of 2014? I had been trying to save money through the bank account, as they call it. I was trying to save the money to leave. I had been planning to leave for quite a while. I didn't like the things that were going on, and I had seen that I couldn't change it. I had tried to go to Spike about my concerns. I had went to Iz. I had went to China. And nobody was willing to listen to me. So I had wound up injuring my back at a job, and I got a $4,000 settlement. Around that same time, Iz had called me and told me that they heard I was a federal agent and that I had stole money from them, which is typical things that they accuse people of that they're about to either try to do something to or put a GD arrest on or whatever. I heard all that, but I had already made the plans to leave. Let me stop you right there. So, obviously, as we sit here in this courtroom, you are cooperating with the government, correct? Yes. At that point back then, when Iz accused you of that, were you cooperating with the government at any point then? No. Okay. So, keep telling us what happened. Okay. So, I told Iz that I wanted to face my accuser. That's when he told me that the call came from a gentleman named Big G inside a prison. So there was no one for me to face. And I showed them that I got a settlement. I mean, I had a receipt for the $4,000 that I had. But I went ahead and went to Michigan. I didn't want any part of it. I wanted to get my life straight. When I went to Michigan, I was not completely free from the organization. It was a process to get away from them. Once I got there, some of the members that were there had informed me that Georgia had called them and asked them to place me under GD arrest and bring me back from Michigan. Later on, another member up there had informed me that someone from the hate committee had called them and told them they were coming to get me. And they told them that they were not going to come and get me. And they never told me anything else about it other than I was safe. I still continued to try to get away from them. And ultimately, when I was arrested is what completely 100% broke me away from them. So, I don't want to ask you about the people who were in the hate committee in more recent times, or the things that the hate committee might have been doing in more recent times. But I do want to ask you that, when you heard about the hate committee in the context that you just told us, did you learn in general terms what the hate committee was or the type of things that it did? The brother that explained it to me explained to me that they were a group of individuals like supposed to be a secret deck or something within the organization that were, I don't even know how to explain it, handled the business is the way they put it. That would be to go get someone in another state or handle issues. It would be more than a violation, like it could be death. Handling business or handling issues. You said the word death. Right. So, we're talking about violent actions here? Right. Did you ever hear the term cleanup crew? Yes, I heard that term before I heard hate committee. What did you understand a cleanup crew to be for the GDs? The same. My understanding would be it would be the same. Did you ever hear the hate committee referred to as a cleanup crew? Yes. Now... While you were still in Georgia, you may not have known the details of the hate committee, but were you generally aware that something called the hate committee existed? I did. I had heard it. And what connection or what relationship, if any, was there between the Sisters of the Struggle, the female GDs, and the hate committee? There was none except for there were two females specifically that the brother Gunner told me was attending meetings. And he came to me and told me, because of my position at the time, he didn't feel like they should be there. And I told him that they shouldn't be there. These two females, they had been released from our count, from the structure for the females, because they were just, they were wild. They wouldn't follow rules, and they had went to another state and pulled a gun on a brother. 
so we had dismissed them from our structure for their behavior. So at that point, you were in a position of authority with the power to kick someone off your account, essentially? I could bring it to my first lady, but she would have to give the final, the final yes or no. Is that what happened with these two women who were going to the hate committee meetings? Yes. The person who told you that, did you say that that was Gunner? Yes. Did he hold any position of authority at that time? At that time, he did. I can't remember if it was enforcement or security, though. And was it? I think it was security. Enforcement or security? Right. So you and he spoke about these sisters who had gone to the hate committee meetings? Yes. Did it sound like you both agreed on what the proper thing was to do about that? Yes. He came to me because of the concern. Now, why did you both think it wasn't right for these women to go to the hate committee meetings? They were not a part of our structure. The sister structure? Right. They were not a part of our structure, and they shouldn't have had any business at all with our... that community. And, I mean, they were reckless. I didn't have the full understanding of what the hate committee was at that time. So, to my knowledge, it was... They were attending meetings, and they shouldn't have been... So you didn't know all the things that the hate committee was doing? No. Did you know enough to know that this wasn't something you wanted your sisters under you taking part in? Right. Did you know a GD or a person named Teiji? I don't believe so. While you were in the GDs in Georgia, was there something that happened in Dublin that caused some problems? Yes, that's why I didn't remember. There was a Tay in Dublin very, very shortly. So something happened with Tay in Dublin? He was killed. That's why I didn't catch it at first. Tay was... He came to a meeting. It was a big meeting. They had invited anybody that wanted to be a part of the count there to come to this meeting so that they were getting everything in order. Tay came and said he wanted to be one of the brothers. So you didn't recognize the name Tay when I asked you at first. But before he was killed, was Tay someone who you knew and who was important to you? Not really. I had met him maybe two or three times at the meetings. And when you said Dublin, that's how I connected it, or I wouldn't have remembered him. And what happened to Tay, was that something that was memorable and important to you? Yeah, very memorable. It bothered me that he was killed. The day of his funeral, they set up... The local group there had set up a big meeting so that the members couldn't attend his funeral. So, before getting to the funeral, I would like you to walk the ladies and gentlemen a little more step by step. Okay. Do you remember what year it was when Tay was killed? 2012, I believe. Do you remember what part of the year? Was it summer? Winter? It was warm. It was a warmer part of the year, probably closer to summer. And how did you first learn that Tay had been killed? A young, a young girl named Naya called me, very upset, told me that she had been with Tay earlier that day and that Tay had been killed. And that Depain and KD had came to her and told her if she said anything about them seeing them with him that day because they came and got him while he was with her, that they would put a bounty on her head. And who were those two people who said that? Depayne and KD. Is that the same Depayne who was the first C? Yes. The same one who was one of the first? Your Honor, we'd object to the double hearsay on this. What do you say to the hearsay objection, Mr. Mulroe? Your Honor, I think at this point we've established the fact that there was a conspiracy, and we've established that one of the rules of that enterprise and of that conspiracy was that members are expected to report things that have happened to one another. So, we would offer this as 801D2E statements. I sustain the objection to the statements offered under co-conspirator exception. I'll allow you to go into it to explain this witness's state of mind and behavior. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm admitting this testimony for the limited purpose of explaining this witness's state of mind and behavior, if in fact it does. And so, before returning to those statements, Ms. Carter, 
Did the things you ended up learning about what happened to Tay cause you to do any things or act in any ways or feel certain feelings? Yes, it did. I wound up speaking to Izzy and I spoke to China. So you ended up doing some things after you learned what happened to Tay? Yes. So what was it you learned about Tay's murder that caused you to take those steps? KD personally came to me upset and told me that he killed Tay. And he said he killed him because he was sleeping with an underage female. And KD told that directly to you? He told me that directly. KD was a gangster disciple? Yes. And this statement from KD directly to you, was that consistent with what you had told us earlier about reporting incidents, major and minor? I don't think that he was reporting it to me because he wanted to report an incident. I think he wanted to get it off his chest. All right. What happens, or did you finish telling us about what it was you learned from KD that then caused you to do something? Yes. Another brother at the time that I was in touch with named G21, he had heard the same thing. So he asked me to be a witness on the line, which is a phone call. Being a witness means just listening in to the third, the three-way call so that he was a witness. He called KK. He asked me not to say anything. And I'm sorry, who was the person who wanted to call KK? G21. The same objection, Your Honor. Overruled. The same ruling. You said that G21 told you basically the same account of what had happened to Tay? Yes. He heard the same thing. And I'm sorry because I've gone back and forth. But remind me, what exactly was that account? When we... He heard the same thing, that he had been killed by KD. And so he was trying to find out why no one had done anything about that. I was a sister. So being a sister, there was not anything that I could do to KD about that. I talked to my first lady. She said that she would speak to Iz. I didn't hear anything, so when he asked me to witness the call, I was willing to do that. And so, before going to the call, let me just see if I'm summarizing it correctly here. That you learned from these various people that Tay had been killed by two gangster disciples. Right. And that you were hearing from people who were bothered in some way or affected in some way by this. Is that basically correct? Yes. A lot of people were bothered by it. And then, what is the purpose of this three-way phone call that you described? You said you were going to be a witness or something? Yes. G21 felt like he might be able to go further with getting something done about it than me, because I was a female. So, he called KK because he was over enforcement. And he asked, what was it about KK's enforcement position that would make G21 want to call KK about this matter? Because KD claimed that KK was the one that gave him the green light to do it. I'm sorry, what was that? KD claimed that KK was the one that gave him the green light to do it. So he was going to call KK and further discuss it? Right. And why did he want you on the line? As a witness. Now, did you actually go on the telephone line and listen to that conversation? Yes, I did. Tell us how that conversation went. They had conversation about a lot of things, but when it came to that particular conversation, KK said that KD had called him and told him that Tay had raped the sister of the struggle and that that's why he wanted the green light to do that. And that was not true. That's why... So, I want to take a few pieces of that. You said that that's why he wanted the green light? Right. Who was it? Based on what KK said on the phone line, who was it that wanted that green light? KD. And what, based on what KK told you, what was the reason that KD wanted the green light? Because he raped, Tay had raped his sister of the struggle. And then the last thing you said was, but that wasn't true. What part of it wasn't true? Tay didn't rape a sister. So it wasn't true that Tay raped someone? No, 